determine the molecular and empirical formula of the compound shown. Black spheres are carbon and gray spheres are hydrogen. So the molecular and empirical formulas are chemical formulas, which just express the composition of a substance. So what elements are present in a substance and in what proportions, okay? The molecular chemical formula is applied to molecular substances, substances made up of molecules, and this formula just states what elements and how many of those elements are present in an individual molecule of the substance, okay? Empirical formulas, on the other hand, are strictly stating what elements are present in a substance and in what proportions. So an empirical formula is strictly a statement of, for example, this substance is this many parts carbon, to this many parts hydrogen, to this many parts oxygen, for example. And empirical formulas are used for non-molecular substances, like ionic compounds, for example. There's no individual molecules, it's just these infinite lattices, to where it only makes sense to state the elements present and the proportion of elements present. Now, for a molecular substance, like the example problems we're going to look at in this video, do have both an empirical formula and a molecular formula. However, you can think about the empirical formula would only be applied to a molecular substance if you didn't know the molecular formula for that substance yet. So, okay, what's the molecular formula of this substance? Well, here's the molecule. There's three carbons, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. Okay, so there's the molecular formula. What's the empirical formula? Well, we would just simplify these subscripts to the simplest whole numbers. Well, these are already the simplest whole numbers. So in this case, the molecular and empirical formulas are the same. Okay, here we've got two carbons and two hydrogens. Here's the molecular formula for this substance. Now, what's the empirical formula? Well, this is just one part carbon to one part hydrogen. There's the empirical formula. Okay, here we've got two carbons and one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. There's the molecular formula. Now the empirical formula is, we've got, this is one part carbon to three parts hydrogen. Okay, here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. There's the molecular formula. Now the empirical formula is, we've got one part carbon to one part hydrogen. Now, but you could think about how, for something like NaCl, an ionic compound, it makes no sense to say something like the chemical formula for this substance is Na2Cl2. No, th there's no discrete molecules here. This is an infinite lattice. If we're going to say Na2Cl2, then why not Na5Cl5 or Na10Cl10? No, it only makes sense to report the empirical formula, the proportions. This is one part sodium to one part chlorine. 